Hi friends! Welcome back to the channel. It's me, Ronnie. Um, I know I was gone for like quite a while and before I get into today's actual topic, I just wanted to explain really quickly that I know I was gone for a while and part of it was just motivation, but another part was that I was really putting my focus towards my other channels and like sort of my other social media. And so like a lot of that energy went over there and I just, I did not have enough energy to be over here because whether you believe it or not, it does take a lot of brain power for me to analyze films. And thus, I felt that it was sort of unsustainable to try to do it every week. So the new schedule that I'm trying to sort of put out there is that each month there will be an actual episode for the podcast, like a full length episode each month. I will have a new one and there'll be like just general analysis of like a lot of different things. However, in between that time, I'm going to be putting out sort of like a weekly review of a movie in relation to that episode of that month, hopefully. Um, so if you follow on Spotify, you'll be getting a new episode every month. But if you are subscribed on YouTube, hopefully you'll be getting new content every week. Hopefully that makes sense. Anyway, it's spooky season, so I thought I would do something in relation to that. And this month's topic is found footage. So this week I'm actually going to be doing a review. Next week hopefully will be an actual episode that is like a full length talking about found footage, but this week we're going to be talking about the movie Creep. And as per usual, I'm going to be looking at my notes, so please do not come after me for not looking at the camera. I'm trying to read. So to begin, Creep is a found footage style film about a videographer taking a job with a man that is supposedly filming his last days for his family to view. However, things are not as they seem as per usual. The movie came out in 2015 and stars Mark Duplass and Patrick Bryce, both of which worked hand in hand to write and direct the film. So they are starring, writing, directing. They are Tommy Wiseauing themselves, but in a good way. So essentially I'm going to give you a full synopsis of the movie so if you don't like spoilers then you should not watch this video because we're going to be talking about the whole thing. Then I'm going to give you some of the first impressions I had of this movie. Then some thoughts on the story, sort of just like the characters, the world building, etc. Then I'll give you some thoughts on sort of like the quality in terms of like, you know, visually, the acting, lighting, technical stuff. And I'll also give you some personal thoughts or just more specific things and final thoughts. So the movie opens with an introduction to our protagonist from his perspective about how he's taken a job to film something with someone. He's not really sure who it is or what he's filming. He arrives at a remote cabin in the mountains to find that he'll actually be filming with a sort of odd man named Joseph. Joseph is apparently a cancer survivor and he wants to make a vid video diary for his unborn child in the case that he doesn't make it. With all of this information, they start sort of with an awkward scene in the bathroom where Joseph immediately gets naked and Mimes taking a bath with his future child, which he calls Tubby Time. In the bathtub, he sort of talks about unaliving himself, which is like sort of odd, and he puts his head under the water, but like jumps out to try to scare our protagonist, Aaron, telling him that it's just kind of his sense of humor to like jump out and like scare people. After tubby time, they plan to go outside, but Joseph says it's kind of cold, so he tells Aaron to get something from the closet to wear, where he is introduced to the mask of Peach Fuzz. According to Joseph, Peach Fuzz is a character that Joseph's dad made up for him one day long ago, along with a song about not fearing said Peach Fuzz, because it is kind of a creepy wolf mask. Either way, they decide to hike to a lake, and on the way, Joseph continues to scare Aaron, and Joseph talks more about, like, sort of dying and, like killing and trying to connect more with Aaron, even though Aaron seems a little reluctant. And honestly, it makes sense. Aaron is sort of this audience stand-in, and I think we're all feeling the, uh, the odd vibes coming from this dude. Then they actually find what they were looking for. It's like this heart-shaped pool, and they decide to dip their toes in the water, and it's said to be sort of like healing those of pure heart. This is actually the first time that we really see like Aaron on camera like in full and it seems like he's sort of growing used to like these weird activities but again he, he's like 
he's sort of just going with the flow. For lunch, they go to a cafe and Joseph sparks up another sort of existential conversation, this time about shame. And Joseph reveals to him that when Aaron first arrived and Aaron could not like find him, like when he was knocking on the door, that he was actually hiding and taking pictures of him. In the next scene, we see them in the evening. They're sort of going up the stairs back to the cabin where Aaron says that he doesn't want to go to the cabin, that like, you know, he's pretty much, he thinks he's done for the day. But Joseph says, come up, we'll have a drink and then you can go. And so that's what Aaron decides to do. As they're sitting there having a drink, Joseph asks Aaron, you know, why he decided to help him film. And of course, Aaron's like, it's a job, you paid me. And they sort of talk about money before Aaron tries to head out for a second time. However, before he can, Joseph decides that he wants to disclose something about Peach Fuzz and the mask. Joseph tells Aaron to shut off the camera, but he doesn't. So we actually hear Joseph disclose that Peach Fuzz is not from his childhood. His dad didn't make up some song, but that he actually used the Peach Fuzz mask to have relations with his wife after he found her viewing history on the computer had to do with animals. He also says that in this scenario, he considers himself to have arred his wife. After this, Joseph then tries to do sort of like a send off to end the video and then Aaron can't find his keys. So Joseph tells him, you've got to stay, just stay the night. You can find your keys in the morning. You don't want to get a DUI trying to drive drunk. At this point, Aaron says they should have another drink. And so we see him over sort of making a drink for Joseph and then Joseph ends up falling asleep. And this is when Aaron decides to try to get his keys back because I think he believes that Joseph has his keys on his person. However, in trying to get his keys back, Joseph's phone rings. And so Aaron answers the phone where it is a call from Angela, Joseph's supposed wife. And this is actually where Angela tells him to leave immediately. And Aaron finds out that Joseph is actually Angela's brother and not his spouse. Then Aaron goes to find Joseph and when he finally does, he tells Joseph that he knows that he's lying and that he is like, essentially mentally ill, but Joseph decides to run away and stand in front of the door with the peach fuzz mask on, essentially telling Aaron that he cannot leave and he won't let him leave. Then we see Aaron sort of charge at Joseph and then it cuts out. Then we cut to footage of Joseph hauling these black trash bags up a hill and then digging in the ground, only to find out that Aaron is actually currently looking at that footage. So Aaron is technically safe, but we find out that in their scuffle, Aaron sort of lost sight of Joseph and he ended up escaping. But apparently a few days after that, Joseph sent him this footage that he's now reviewing. And the next day he receives a package and opens it to find a knife, another DVD and a wolf plushie that when he opens the plush of the wolf, he finds a necklace that plays a song and also has a picture of each of them on like either side of this like little heart. Obviously this creeps him out. And so Aaron then calls the cops, but of course the cops can't really do anything because he doesn't really have any information and Joseph hasn't done anything to like physically harm him. That night, Aaron turns on the camera to tell us about his nightmares again when he hears the noise in his house. So he gets up, he turns on all the lights. And from our perspective as the camera, we can see that Joseph is actually there still watching him. Still, when Aaron tries to find Joseph, he's pretty much eluded every time. Then we see Aaron sleeping later, but this time it's from Joseph's perspective where he cuts off a lock of his hair. Next, we see Aaron with another DVD that he received from Joseph where it essentially invites him to chat honestly with him. So the next day, Aaron shows up at the lake and sits to wait for Joseph when we see Joseph come up behind him and hit him with an ax, killing him. Then we turn to see that the footage that we were just watching is actually footage that Joseph is also watching and he's continued to watch this over and over again. And he sort of talks to the camera as if it's still Aaron. And then in our final scene, we actually see that Joseph has an entire closet full of DVDs and VHS tapes in relation to the people that he's probably killed and done this to. And he's actually on his way to doing it again. 
So, with that in mind, my first impressions while watching it, I was definitely waiting for the other shoe to drop and so like there was a lot of anticipation and a lot of build-up in this movie. I also really like this movie because it reminded me a lot of what it's like to be just like a young filmmaker or even just a freelance filmmaker just looking for work where you like really never know like who you're going to be working for like you really just never know who you're going to encounter and that's part of why I don't really do freelance videography. And obviously like I never would have taken like a job out in like the woods or something but more more so because like I'm a smallish like AFAB person so like it's super dangerous <laughs> to like do that by myself. And funny enough when I was looking up sort of information about this movie that is sort of what they based this on was sort of their experiences in like being sort of freelance filmmaker and just sort of showing up to random jobs like this because again you never know who you're gonna run into. But I especially loved this movie the first time I saw it because it subverted a lot of my expectations. I really had no idea what was gonna happen throughout the entire thing. I, I went in with no expectations and I came out like feeling very pleased. In terms of the story, I love that we immediately get to see who Aaron and Joseph are via like their first interaction. Joseph is sort of this like odd and like weirdly trying to like initiate closeness or intimacy through this hug even though they don't know each other at all. And of course Aaron being our voice of reason is uncomfortable with this because it's literally his first time interacting with a stranger and so you can sort of see how like even though he's uncomfortable he still hugs him like he doesn't say no I think partially because it's a job but also because he's just trying to be nice which will eventually be like the downfall of him is him just trying to be nice and like being like I mean look at him he's just so sad you know and of course upon re-watching the movie you can see how there are a lot of moments that are intentional even if everything feels like very on the spot or like very um like made up on the spot like the Peach Fuzz song especially feels like it was made up on the spot which of course in the context of the story it technically would have been made up on the spot but I love how the lyrics say specifically like not to be afraid and like you definitely should be afraid like especially if the Peach Fuzz mask is going on and one of my favorite like little tidbits of information about this film is that they originally wanted to call it Peach Fuzz but part of the reason they didn't is because because they didn't want the audience sitting through the entire movie wondering what peach fuzz meant and like I commend them for like making that change because I definitely would have been sitting there being like ooh peach fuzz there's something so much more sinister to peach fuzz and I think that would have sort of given away a little too much about the movie to be quite honest. Like I think as the audience we're sitting there trying to figure out what's going on with Joseph but I also feel like there's a sense that we are trying to that Joseph is trying to figure out what kind of personality Aaron has, like how this interaction is going to go. And I think that's honestly a lot of what Joseph sort of bases his actions off of is how much he's reading from Aaron's personality and how he reacts to the things that he's doing that are sort of outlandish or sudden or scary. More specifically, I think he's reading this so he can prey on the fact that Aaron seems to be someone who is willing to give him a chance even if he does weird things or even scary things. I especially love the little moment where Joseph carves the, carves the J plus A in a heart on the rock at the lake because like at that point if you're going into the movie blind we're supposed to think that the J is Joseph and the A is Angela for his wife but in reality it definitely is for Aaron and that is such a great little tidbit that comes back later that I love so much. And of course when we are watching Aaron pour another drink for Joseph it's very suspicious that he started to act very like nice and seemingly like wanting to drink and I think this is interesting because the lines of morality sort of blur at this moment because even though Joseph is strange he hasn't done anything that like is specifically hurtful or harmful to Aaron. Like he hasn't done anything that is like objectively bad or wrong. He's just been like really weird and trying to foster a sense of closeness where there isn't any. Whereas in this moment, like it's generally seen that it's like 
objectively not a good thing to drug people. And of course, I think the interesting parallels between wolves and Joseph and Aaron are like so prevalent throughout the entire thing, but especially towards the end. There's so many hints to the relationship between how Joseph seems to be like a murderer because he likes Aaron so much. And even though his intentions are sort of like in the right place to just like be friends and to be close to him, he ends up, you know, killing the relationship before it can really get off the ground by being too close to him. And he sort of describes this when he describes wolves and why he likes wolves. But I also think that Aaron could fall in that, like sort of a wolf in, in sheep's clothing more specifically in the fact that he's a lot smarter than like we anticipated and I definitely think that like you know wolves are are always for some reason they always seem to be something that we like underestimate but in reality like wolves are actually very scary. So there's not a lot to say about the quality of this film because again this is like shot this is a found footage movie. It is shot in the sense that like it's supposed to be handheld, a little bit shaky at times, and um, like the perspectives and angles aren't like super like crazy or anything. They're not like super artistic, but they do have their own meaning and they do have their own place. Especially I think the part in, sort of, in terms of like technicality that's really interesting is the fact that they don't use any music throughout this movie. I think a lot of found footage movies tend to use a lot of music and so you can sort of tell what's going to happen but I think audibly this movie is really interesting because there are so many jump scares actually in this movie that are like great because they aren't anticipated by music or sound but they are also about our antagonists so they aren't for nothing. They're not they're not jump scares just for the sake of being scary or to scare the audience. They are jump scares that are very genuine in relation to our antagonist. And of course, I have to commend Mark Duplass for like his just amazing acting in this movie. It feels very real and authentic. And I just, I very much can appreciate that, especially when it comes to playing sort of a weird character, one that has enough nuance that he's weird, but not just like crazy. I think a lot of actors tend to make characters like this just crazy and to make them act crazy and sporadic. Um, when in reality, I think these characters are, again, much more nuanced. And so just slapping, like, the evil and crazy label on it is, like, really easy to just sort of, like, pull off. Like, anyone can be a menace, but, like, can you be someone who seems sort of well-intentioned but very, very eerie at the same time? And finally, one of the other technical things that I want to talk about in terms of audio, because audio was something that I was very heavily focused on in this movie, because again, there's not a lot of like, you know, angles or technicality that's really to like analyze. I'm sure there's a lot of meaning behind some of those, but I was really focused on the audio, especially because there's no music. And I think the final scene with Aaron is perfect because of the integration of that sort of like leaf blower or chainsaw or whatever it is as the background noise that sort of ordinarily you wouldn't think much of because it just seems like something that would happen in the space that they're in but because we are talking about you know Joseph we have this moment where Aaron turns around to see um because you know it sort of like startles him and Again, I think this sort of normal, calm looking setting along with this, you know, ordinary sound that you would normally not think much of um, now becomes very, very unsettling in this context. And I think that's just a great way to like use sound to sort of like trick you into thinking that something more sinister is happening or to just sort of give you an unsettled feeling. So some of my more personal thoughts. Obviously, I found this film really interesting to watch the first time around because I think at the time I'd only known Mark Duplass from like the Mindy Project and on that he's like, I, I assumed honestly that he was more of like a comedian than like an actor who does like more serious films but also I have to recognize that on that show he also plays sort of like a weird character so it, it does make some sense. Um, I think he's also in like the Lazarus effect. 
So I think if you're not familiar with the movie or like you hadn't seen it before or like what it's about at all, you could easily say that this guy just has trouble interacting with new people and he's just kind of weird. And I think that's a really good line to walk in terms of acting and characters is that he's just as kind of weird. I feel like sometimes, sort of like what I said before about how they try to write an antagonist as before they do something bad, they forget that that person is supposed to look like a normal person or to sort of walk the line. And so they often like give themselves away before they mean to because they don't let them act normal or on the line of normal or at least harmless. Like they'll, they'll let an antagonist do something that's like morally sort of objectionable and so then you can, then you feel like you have a right to call them an antagonist and that their weirdness is like a justifiable reason to be like, I don't like them. Whereas in this movie, there's no justifiable reason to not like him other than he just acts sort of weird and he gives you a weird feeling. There's nothing that he does inherently that's like just objectionable that you can just decide is like wrong across the board. And of course, I read some reviews online and like sort of saw what other people had to say about it. And I agree that I saw a lot of people talking about the realistic nature of this movie is what makes it really unsettling. Like there are genuinely some people who attach themselves to people too early on and then become obsessed. Anyway, my final thoughts are just, I really love this movie. I think it's definitely worth a watch and it's just, it's a good addition to the found footage or sort of like horror genre because like it definitely like walks the line of like, you know, sort of being like horror, but it also is just unsettling in the best way possible. And I think it's great, especially for those who like, aren't looking to be scared out of their mind, who like don't want to see anything supernatural or anything like too creepy, scary. Um, but it does have like a few jump scares. So if you're not a jump scare fan, then like you might not enjoy it for that reason. But there's so many movies in the found footage horror genre, which again, I was trying to talk about like next week and sort of put into context, just like the state of found footage movies and how like this one is a really great addition because it has such an original feel to it and it's just done so well. So, so I hope you guys enjoyed this little review, sort of talking about the movie Creep. Definitely check it out. I think right now it's on Netflix. That could change over a period of time because they're always moving stuff around, but more or less, I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely leave down below either your thoughts on this movie or, you know, other movies you'd like to see me talk about or just topics in general you want to see me talk about. And don't forget to tune in to my podcast every month for a new episode. So hopefully this works out. And um, yeah, I will see you guys in the next one.